I am collaborating on a big elevator project at the moment, and one of the parts we needed for this to work was a sideways instant extension for a two-way vertical flying machine. So what I've tried to do is categorize all the different extensions you could have on a two-way flying machine in Minecraft. For starters, we're gonna forget about the instant motion of this extension here. All the extensions we are gonna look at today have some kind of movement delay. It's kind of like when you flip a hose or a rope and you know, like the, <laughs> the hump of motion kind of travels towards the end. Uh, but what I've done here is I've picked out these seven types of extensions because they actually kind of cover every possible two-way flying machine extension in Minecraft, specifically for any direction of movement and any direction of extension, one of these machines will work on your two-way flying machine. So I'll show each of these designs, like explain why they work and how you could build them. But after I'd built these up, I started wondering why seven? Like why did there end up being seven designs that covered all the different cases I needed? And so I found some interesting mathematical reasons why there's seven cases here. And the math there turned out to be surprisingly similar to math I've also been learning about uh, quantum physics and relativity. There's a kind of imaginative connection there and I'll see if I can make it make sense at the end of the video. The most basic problem here that we're trying to solve is we have some like sticky connected chunk of blocks and we want to move it in two possible directions and then we want some other chunk of blocks to copy its movement so it moves left this one moves left so we pull this first set of honey blocks towards us and then the other one comes towards us as well this however fails to work in the opposite direction so if we move uh, the honey away from us then well this set of honey blocks comes towards us one way you could fix this problem is by swiveling this observer around to the side like this so now when these honey blocks move forward the redstone block there kind of collides with this observer and blocks uh, these three blocks. Well, that's not a good way to say that. <laughs> um, the redstone block prohibits these three blocks from moving any closer, but these honey blocks were still left unmoved. The next trick you might try is adding a glass block here. So uh, the honey blocks still get pulled towards us like they did in the first case. But now when you push this set of honey blocks away from us, uh, this glass block will power that observer causing this piston to fire. The honey blocks did get moved, but the problem is that when this piston arrived at its new location, uh, it got powered a second time and pulled the honey blocks two blocks instead of one. Okay, so I'm gonna freeze the game so we can look at this solution tick by tick or 20th of a second at a time. And I think this is actually one of my favorite technical Minecraft tricks. So the first set of honey blocks is just about finished moving over. As it moved, it activated this observer here. So if we step one tick forward, yeah, this observer turns on and this sticky piston starts extending. Then a couple ticks later, this observer turns off, this one turns on, and so far, this thing has behaved exactly the same as that setup. But now, because this back observer turned on, this observer turns on a second time right before it moves. And one of the really weird things about observers is that if they're turned on right before they're moved, they won't turn on when they arrive at their new location. And as far as I know, that might be the only way to move an observer without it turning on afterwards. Yeah, and uh, here it is at full speed. And then once you have one of those, you can just chain together as many as you want. And I mean, that's pretty much the first and most basic two-way uh, slimestone extension you can have. So that's horizontal movement, horizontal extension. I guess the second case we'll look at is horizontal movement, where uh, the extension is in line with the movement. You could imagine this as being like a wing coming out of the side of your flying machine. This is almost like a spear extending in front of the flying machine. So it'll move back with uh, our little foot trolley here, but yeah, we can push the foot trolley forward and the extension will move forward too. And then for two-way horizontal flying machines, there's two more possible cases you can have. And that's extension upward, so almost like uh, the sail on top of a boat. I've been trying to think of like a specific shape for each of these extensions, so it's easier to keep track of them mentally. The horizontal extensions here, you can rotate those 90 degrees horizontally and they'll still work fine, but if you rotate them 90 degrees like upwards, they won't work because of quasi-connectivity. A lot of redstone interactions in Minecraft 
aren't the same if you rotate them. For example, this observer does not power this piston. However, this observer here does. If we were to just rotate this extension uh, upwards, there'd be a sticky piston right here. And this is problematic now because it's supposed to be getting powered by this observer, but now it's also getting powered by this observer up here. That extra powering does end up breaking the machine. You get around it by just swiveling the sticky piston around to the side. So it's pretty much the same extension. You're just kind of reshaping a couple pieces. It's a similar story for the downwards uh, horizontal movement extension. The problem on this one is that if we just kind of rotate the horizontal extension downwards, uh, we'd have a redstone block right above a piston and then we would move it to the left or right. Problem is that pistons are powered by a diagonal upward blocks. That weird phenomena is called quasi-connectivity. If you haven't heard of it, and it's one of the things that gives Java edition of Minecraft its uh, redstone pizzazz. And it is a fight fire with fire kind of problem because we can fix it by just moving the redstone block uh, from here upwards. Oops. <laughs> Does this fix it? Okay, so we put this here. Is, is that fixed again? Okay, cool. The other three types of extensions are on vertical two-way flying machines. So here we have a little foot trolley that can go up one block or down one block. And it's pretty much the same idea. In fact, it's even like the same design pattern. So there's two main differences between these vertical extensions and the horizontal ones. So the first is that instead of using that weird kind of double observer setup, we're just using a glass block. Even though we have a glass block here, we're still avoiding that kind of double movement that broke the uh, third experiment we did. And the way we keep this thing from breaking is by adding like extra pistons that act as brakes. So this piston here and this piston here are brake pistons. Uh, in other words, they're not moving anything, but they extend at specific moments and an extended piston can't be pushed. If you keep your eye on this sticky piston here, it'll extend twice. So after it moves down and pulls the honey with it, it extends up and tries to grab the honey a second time. Uh, the honey isn't grabbed though, because this piston is getting in the way of this whole honey-like component moving downwards. It's the same story with this uh, piston here. So there's a brief moment where this sticky piston would want to extend with quasi power from this redstone block, but before it has time to extend, this piston will extend first. These last two, these these are uh, these got pretty hairy. So these these aren't neat. They're not flat. Um, it's not a simple design. I'm gonna do a fly around so you can try to replicate it if you want to. Pretty much, it's the same like functionality as uh, this design. So like the glass block, the double piston brake system. But the slime and honey blocks are just bent in all kind of weird ways to get it, you know, upwards or downwards. One thing I am proud of myself for, I managed to get all seven of these extensions to have like a four block uh, repeating segment pattern. Technically, these last two have an eight block repeating pattern that has <laughs> 180 degree rotational glide symmetry with four blocks. These will also be in a world download on Planet Minecraft if you want to fiddle with the exact blocks. So both to try to convince myself that this was like all seven cases, also to try to understand why it was seven. Cause like, it's not a Minecrafty number, you know, you'd expect it to be four, eight, maybe six, maybe. But it turns out there's actually a super cool math reason that it's seven. So we have to talk about like the symmetry of Minecraft physics. And I think this is why uh, quasi-connectivity has the notorious fame that it does is that it's a non-symmetric interaction between Minecraft blocks. Uh, so what I've tried to do with this diagram here is I have like the three directions, the three axes, you know, of the Minecraft world. And I've taken a quasi-powered piston and just like spun it around each of those axes, like in all four possible ways. So for instance here, we're spinning it around the blue axis. I've kind of tried to highlight that with a little end rods here. Quasi-connectivity, is not rotationally symmetric. When you spin it, it doesn't work here, doesn't work here, doesn't work here. Um, when you spin it around the red axis, uh, here it works in two orientations and doesn't work in another two. Only when you spin it, like if you're looking straight down at it from above, 
does it work in all four different rotations. What that means is quasi-connectivity isn't totally non-symmetric and isn't totally symmetric either. It's <laughs> quasi-connectivity is quasi-symmetric. This is what I think is the super cool part, is you could think of a two-way flying machine as a line and as the extension as a ray um, pointing outwards from some point on that line. So let's just say you are restricting yourselves to like placing those in a perfectly like square grid, or I guess it'd be a 3D grid of cubes. Really, there's only two ways you can place it, which is that uh, the ray and the line like occupy the same space, so to speak, or oppositely that the line and the ray point in different directions. And so these seven sliagrams, <laughs> by the way, I've been calling these um, sliagrams for slimestone diagram. These seven sliagrams are precisely the seven ways that you can situate these two line and arrow configurations. If you count two of those like situations the same, if they're a 90 degree rotation of each other, like looking down from above. And so there's seven of them because we're reducing by symmetry of some kind. So what I've been learning about modern discoveries in quantum physics is that they often like rely heavily on the symmetry of our universe, specifically on the fact that particle interactions in our universe should pretty much be the same regardless of where in the universe they take place, regardless of like the angle they're taking place at or, you know, the rotational and inertial frame of reference they take place in. But what's cool about Minecraft it's not like that. It's a non-relative physics simulation. I'm just fiddling with this because this is a uh, relatively simple demonstration of that fact. You have two devices, you know, they're mirror images of each other, but one works, like it, you know, it extends this slime block downwards, but this one doesn't. If you want to learn more about the physics here, you can look up the cochin specker theorem, or I don't know if I'm <laughs> pronouncing those correctly, or the, I think it's the cochin conway free will theorem. But in both those results, something neat was learned by studying what kinds of symmetries the laws of physics obey. Specifically, what's going on with this machine is that there's kind of a race condition where two pistons are getting powered or updated or uh, set to change in some way in the same game tick. Which one gets updated first affects the outcome of their interaction. And which one gets updated first changes depending on what uh, like rotation or reflection of the device you're using. You can fix it by actually just pointing this piston sideways so it brushes up against uh, this sticky piston and that uh, brushing up will kind of forcibly correct the update order of the pistons. This other diagram here I made was for not quasi-connection, but direct connection, which does create the same outcome in all rotations of it. And this is also psychologically interesting to me. A lot of people struggle with Minecraft, I guess you could say for its lack of relativity. More accurately, it's lack of symmetry like one contraption you can build you know if you rotate it or move it down too far or if you just place it in some other unexpected way it doesn't work and uh, that's horribly frustrating when it looks like it should be a symmetric interaction what this means is that in the same way that our universe has the laws of special relativity minecraft kind of has its own laws of special non-relativity for people who are good at technical minecraft it's usually because they've learned those laws well so for instance, quasi-connectivity, it's partially symmetric. You have item physics tick skipping based on the item's ID. So this would almost be like a partial symmetry across time and not just space. And then often when you have competing interactions, it's kind of which one goes first depends on what their XYZ coordinates are. And there's usually some kind of consistent way the game sorts out which coordinates go first. I was trying to think of a name for these, and I thought of absotivity. So like, our universe has the laws of general relativity, Minecraft has <laughs> the laws of uh, general absotivity. But after I wrote this down, I learned it's actually already a word in physics. So I don't know what they should be called, but I feel like we should have a name for this family of rules in Minecraft that like defies your expectations of symmetry. That's all I got for this time. My name's Chris. Thanks for watching.